Greetings nerdlings and welcome to Amalgam Nation Presents World of Lorecraft, Herocraft, Tyrion Fordring Edition. As the governor of the Alliance Principality of Hartclan, Tyrion lived a comfortable life, well respected by his subjects and loved by his wife, Caranda, and son Talon. Both a great warrior and a just ruler, Tyrion was renowned throughout the Kingdom of Lordaeron. In spite of his acclaimed military prowess, Tyrion's experience as a paladin during the Orcish invasions had taught him to value peace. After the wars were over, Tyrion prayed every night that no conflict would ever bring harm to his subjects again. One day he encountered an old orc hermit living in an abandoned tower. The two immediately battled and traded blows until a piece of the ruined tower collapsed on Tyrion, knocking him senseless. He awoke in his bed days later and discovered that he had been found badly beaten, tied to his saddle, and had been healed by his ambitious second, Barthillus. Realising that the orc had saved him, Tyrion set out and retraced his steps back to the tower. The orc, Aetric, told Tyrion that before the coming to Azeroth, the orcs had been a noble society rooted in shamanism. After the war, he had left the corrupt horde. Tyrion, seeing great honour in Aetric, promised to keep his existence a secret, returning his to his people and informing them that the orc had been dealt with and was not a threat. Bertillus was not so confident and called Sadan Datrahan to come and settle the matter himself. Datrahan picked up the trail and led a group of hunters into the woods, where they found Aetric. During the orc's capture, Tyrion fought against Datrahan's men, prompting Bertillus to gleefully note that his actions were treasonous. Tyrion was brought to Stratholm to stand trial. Despite Carandra's pleas to forget his honour and tell the jury what they wanted to hear, Tyrion, hoping to be an example to his son, told the court exactly what had happened. Ultimately, the jury of Admiral Dalen Proudmore, Archmage Antonidas, Archbishop Alonsus Fowl, and Prince Artis Mantle decided that since Tyrion had assaulted Alliance soldiers, he could no longer be a member of the Knights of the Silver Hand and was doomed to exile. Uther the Lightbringer performed a ceremony to strip Tyrion of his powers and sent him home to gather some supplies. Desperate to prevent Aetric from being executed for war crimes, Tyrion rode back to Stratholm where he attacked Aetric's guards. Surprised, they still managed to subdue him, until a group of orcs stormed into the city. Tyrion used the distraction to free Aetric and flee the city. When they were in the wilds, Tyrion saw that Aetric was near death and did the only thing he could do, call upon the powers of the light to heal the orc who had saved him. To his surprise, he still had the powers blessed by the light, and Aetric was saved. They abruptly found themselves surrounded by orcs and a new warchief, Troll, who approached Aetric and invited him back into the Horde, which had since reverted to its shamanistic roots once more. Aetric was thrilled to accept. Before he left with his people, Aetric proclaimed that Tyrion and he were brothers, bound by blood and honour. Through his actions, Tyrion also gained the undying respect of Troll, one of the few humans he holds in such high regard and which continues to this day. Tyrion remained in Lordaeron to watch his son Talon be inducted into the Silver Hand. His son later became the Lord of Mardenhold. Tyrion's wife told his son that Tyrion had died and even took him to a false grave at the Undercroft where Talon buried the toy warhammer his father had given him in his memory. Tyrion lived out his exile in a small farmstead in the northwest of what became the Eastern Plaguelands, on the shores of the Thondroil River, with his trusty horse Maradhor. During the Third War, he often fought off the undead scourge. He was dismayed to find later that his son Talon joined the Scarlet Crusade and even became the High Lord of that order. Nonetheless, he kept watching his son from afar and even enlisted some adventurers to help him as he and a few crusaders became trapped in the small village of Cinderholm, surrounded by scourge forces who were interrupting the crusaders' attempt to resettle the area. Later, Tyrion turned to adventurers yet again to have them collect mementos of his son's past which finally enabled him to convince his son to leave the crusade only to see him killed in the attempt. Spurred by his son's death, Tyrion resolved to reform the original Silver Hand as a force of good in the world. Tyrion in Vanilla World of Warcraft
Tyrion Fordring was a level 61 elite quest giver located by a cottage near the northwestern border of the eastern Plaguelands on the eastern bank of the Tondroil River. He readily accepted help from both the Horde and Alliance in his quest line in following his assertions that race does not dictate honour and from what he learned from his encounter with Atric. Tyrion in Burning Crusade in World of Warcraft, the Burning Crusade, Tyrion Fordring could be found in the old Hillsbred foothills via the Caverns of Time as a level 55 NPC. Tyrion can be seen in the South Shore Inn wearing the same plate chest he wears nowadays and discussing Ashbringer with several of his fellow members of the Silver Hand. He was the first to refer to the future weapon by its legendary name. Sadly, most of the friends assembled here would later turn to bitter enemies as they embraced the zeal of the crusade they would later create. Tyrion in Wrath of the Lich King In the light of the dawn, the last quest of the Death Knight starting area, the player joins High Lord Darian Mograine, leading 10,000 Scourge against 300 Defenders of the Light at the Battle for Light's Hope Chapel. After a hundred or so defenders die, Tyrion appears to confront Darien. Alexandros Mograine, Darien's father, also makes an appearance. After an interaction between Darien and Tyrion, and then Darien and Alexandros, the Lich King will appear and cast a spell that incapacitates Tyrion. Darien, wielding the corrupted Ashbringer once held by his father, throws the sword to Tyrion where it is purified. Tyrion then charges towards Artis, who runs and eventually escapes. It is here that Tyrion makes his vow to destroy Artis, thus uniting the Argent Dawn and the Knights of the Silver Hand into the Argent Crusade. Tyrion also pledges his Knights of the Ebon Blade to the cause. Tyrion also appears at the port of Valgard in Northrend's Howling Fjord as a level 73 quest giver titled High Lord Tyrion Fordring. He is marked as Supreme Commander of the Argent Crusade. The Argent Crusade is the merging of the Argent Dawn and the Silver Hand. Tyrion can also be found in Ice Crown at the Argent Vanguard, talking to the Ebon Watcher. Through their dialogue with each other, you learn the Ebon Watcher is actually Darien Mograin. Darien Mograin talks pessimistically, saying they cannot win when the Lich King is not shackled to any virtues of the light. Tyrion states he will not lower himself to the Scourge's level. They will do this with honour, or else become the monster they are trying to kill. Reasoning that a small force of elite combatants would fare better against the Scourge than a large army, which would provide more bodies to raise, Tyrion set up the Argent Tournament and Crusaders Coliseum in Ice Crown, where he could test the best warriors the Alliance and Horde had to offer. Tyrion leads the Ashen Verdict into Ice Crown Citadel and eventually faces Lich King in battle at the Frozen Throne. Artis freezes Tyrion in a block of ice, slays the champions he brought with him, and prepares to raise them as agents of the Scourge. As the Lich King begins casting his spell, Tyrion manages to break free of the ice and shatter Frostmourne with the Ashbringer. The souls that were trapped inside the Runeblade turn on the Lich King, giving Fordring and his champions, who are resurrected by the spirit of Tyrannus, an opportunity to defeat him. Tyrion in Cataclysm after his victory over the Lich King, Tyrion returned to Lordaeron to reclaim his old home, Hartclan, from the remnants of the Scarlet Crusade. Tyrion is removed from his riverside hovel in the eastern Plaguelands, and is located in Mardenhold Keep. Tyrion in Legion During the battle on the Broken Shore, Tyrion was captured by Gul'dan. Both the Alliance and the Horde attempted to free him, but as they approached, Tyrion warned that it was a trap. Suspending Tyrion above a lake of fell lava, Gul'dan summoned a massive demon named Croesus, who used his fell breath to burn Tyrion to a crisp. Horrified, the Alliance and Horde forces defeated the massive demon shortly afterwards. Despite appearances, this was not the end of Tyrion. While seeking out the Ashbringer, the Silver Hand learned that Tyrion's life essence still clung to the world from somewhere on the broken shore, but it was quickly fading. The heroes made their way to Hope's End on the Broken Shore. There they encountered Jailer Zerus, who had encased Tyrion in a crystal fell prison. After defeating the Jailer, a champion ventured into the Lost Temple nearby, where they encountered the Dreadlord Balnazar, claiming possession of Ashbringer and using its power. The champion defeated Balnazar before returning to Tyrion on the surface. 
Unfortunately, Tyrion had endured too much at the hands of his burning legion captors. In his final moments, he urged the champion to take up the blade, stop the legion, and become the Ashbringer. Tyrion's last light faded shortly afterward, and his body was taken back to Light's Hope Chapel for a proper burial. After this, a death lord of the Ebon Blade fought his or her way into the tomb of Tyrion to raise him as the fourth horseman. However, the light protected Tyrion's body, forcing the death knights to retreat to Acherus. Tyrion's Personality Rising from the ranks of a knight and later a paladin, Tyrion Fordring was a man of honour, and his commitment to upholding his honour no matter the cost often brought him into conflict with his family and friends. His wife Carandra Fordring often lamented the sacrifices she had to make in order to adapt to her husband's tendency to place his personal honour above everything else, his family included. So, for instance, when Fordring attempted to explain to his wife and to his longtime friend Arden that his commitment to saving the life of Atrig was a matter of honour, he encountered, for the most part, a total lack of understanding, with both Arden and Carandra arguing that he also has a responsibility to his family and his subjects, a responsibility he should not neglect in the name of honour. Tyrion's honour, therefore, was the ultimate cause of his downfall. During his trial, he was offered an opportunity to be restored to good standing within the Alliance if only he would renounce the vow he gave to Aedric. Tyrion refused, saying that his honour precluded him from doing so. In the end, Tyrion Fordring paid heavily for the honour he held in such high esteem. Not only was he stripped of his office and estates, but his family. Carandra Fordring and Talon refused to accompany him into exile his wife stating she would not let him ruin their lives as he had ruined his own. Thus, after his rescue of Aedric from the gallows in Stratholme, honour was very much the only thing he still had. After his exile and the fall of Lord Oran to the Scourge, Tyrion fell into inactivity, feeling there was no reason for him to fight. That all changed, however, with the death of Talon. Filled with righteous anger at the loss of his beloved son, Tyrion vowed to re-establish the Knights of the Silver Hand to oppose the spread of evil in the world. Thank you for watching, and as always, remember, play the game and game to play.